Hello everyone, and I hope that you're doing great today. Now, today we're going through the CXC CSEC biology paper. And this biology paper is a paper one from the year 2023. In fact, this is a mid-June paper. As I always remind you to do is to go through the instructions carefully and make sure you understand each instruction. And if you should have any questions or queries, please clarify them with the examiner before you begin the examination. At this point, let us go to question number one. And question number one reads, which of the following features is used to classify a group of organisms as class insecta? And this is referring to insects. And so the shape, size, and color have nothing to do with the classification of insects. However, their body segments definitely do. And so um, the segments of an insect's body is the head, thorax, and abdomen. So option D is the clear-cut answer. For question number two, which of the following options correctly defines a niche and a habitat. A niche is the role of the organism within the environment or habitat or ecosystem. And so the habitat is the place where an organism lives. And so therefore, option A is correct. Again, you can always pause and go to the other options um, to see why they are incorrect. All right. For question number three, is a living organism such as plants are affected by abiotic factors which determine where they become established. Which of the following list presents some of these determining factors? And abiotic factors mean that the things that are non-living within the environment or ecosystem that actually affect the survival of the organism, all right, or organisms. And so sunlight availability, soil pH, and minerals, definitely they are abiotic factors that affect living organisms. And so option B is correct. All right. Again, this is a popular question, so there's no need to even stop and talk about that too much. Uh, but question number four is that which of the following organisms are most important in biodegradation? And biodegradation actually uh, means, in, term, in a very short or simple way, is a decomposition method, right? Decomposing of organic materials. And so bacteria is very important in decomposition. All right, or decay. And so option A is correct. All right, for question number five, and this reads that item five refers to the following food chain, which shows the feeding relationship in a freshwater lake. So we have algae, larvae, heel, and pike. And so which of the organisms would be considered the secondary consumer in the food chain shown above? And of course, heel is the answer. So option A is correct. Um, algae is the producer, larvae is the primary consumer, and pike is the tertiary consumer. All right, so let's go to the next question, question number six. And item six refers to the following food web. And it said, how many food chains are there in the food web shown above? And the answer is three, which is option B. And I highlight each food chain with a different color. So you can actually could go through it and see the different food chains that are there. And it must be a continuous path from the producer. All right, which is the plant in this case. All right, so question number seven. is approximately 10% of the energy stored in food is available to the next organism in a food chain because of what? And this is because most of the energy is lost as heat during the respiration process. And again, um, respiration is the need or the production of energy. And so all organisms will need to produce some form of energy um, and they will use that energy for their own processes and functions. So definitely they use up some of the energy as well, right? So not 100% of energy will pass on to no organism. All right, item number eight refers to the following diagram of the carbon cycle. And the question reads, which of the following processes convert organic matter into inorganic forms? And a matter of fact, just to make a note, carbon dioxide is the only inorganic matter or substance that is shown in the carbon cycle. All right, and so the only two process that is going back to carbon dioxide is option two and option six. All right, so therefore, um, C is the correct answer for this question. For question number nine, is that which of the following outcomes or conditions would be considered a negative impact or negative impacts of human activity on the environment? And so the option there will be all of them, pollution, habitat loss, um, climate change. Definitely, um, we are destroying the earth by all our actions. We're polluting, we're destroying habitat, 
by cutting down trees because the trees are habitat for some organisms. We build on certain property or place or land that are homes for many organisms. And definitely, we burn a fossil fuel and all of those will actually affect the climate. Um, by, um, so you can consider like global warming and so on. So all of them are correct uh, options, all right? Next question is question number 10. And it says, which of the following are effects of pollutants on coral reefs in the Caribbean? And uh, first op um, the first option is said less reef fish, more branching corals. And the third option there said increase in macroalgal and seagrass growth. And so the only thing that um, is not caused by pollutant is more branching coral, because that would be a, uh, a very good thing. And so option one and three are the correct ones. And so option B is, um, is correct. And a point to note, um, excess growth of algae is caused by a process called called eutrophication, where minerals or nutrients are deposited in water bodies and cause the algae to grow rapidly. And it's also termed as algal blooming. All right, next question is question number 11. And so item 11 refers to the following graph of population growth. And of course, you can study the graph carefully in terms of time and number of organisms. And it said phase four of the graph of population growth is most likely due to what? The first point to note is that the, at that phase four, there's a decline, okay? And so what could cause the decline there is competition from invasive species. That's the best option right there. Adequate food and space, um, high natural um, birth rate, decrease uh, disease resistance, those will increase population. So therefore, the only one that will cause a decrease is actually um, A. All right, and so A is the correct answer there. All right, so question number 12 is a which is a when compared to a cheek cell, a muscle cell contains more of what? And a muscle cell will carry more actions, movement, and so on. So mitochondria is sure, is sure the answer because uh, muscle cells um, require more energy, all right, compared to a cheek cell. All right, question number 13. And question number 13 is that item 13 refers to the following diagram of a cell. And of course, I label the cell prior. So you have the mitochondria, you have chloroplast, you have vacuole, you have nucleus. It's a which of the labeled structure is responsible for controlling cellular activities. And that is the nucleus, which is option four. All right, mitochondria is, mitochondria is for energy, chloroplast is for photosynthesis, and vacuole is to store water, food, and waste. All right, question number 14. And it said, item 14 refers to the following diagram, which shows a xylem vessel. All right, I remember that the xylem vessel is a dead tissue. Okay, it's dead. All right. And it said here, it said the major feature that is responsible for the rigid structure of the xylem vessel is the what? And that is lignin. And lignin actually forms from cellulose. All right. So it is a, a very complex uh, material. All right. Coming from carbohydrate. All right, cellulose is a carbohydrate, polysaccharide, in fact. All right, question number 15. And item 15 refers to the following apparatus setup. And so we have a potato with, um, in a petri dish, and we have distilled water in both potato and also in the petri dish. All right, so the question now actually reads now, it said, what can be done to cause the level of solution in the petri dish to rise after 20 minutes? And of course, as you know this, um, for the solution in the petri dish to rise, water must leave on the potato. So therefore, the potato solution must be more dilute, all right? All right, and so here it said five grams of salt, um, five grams of salt to the distilled water in the potato only. Um, that would cause it to be, um, if you put salt in the potato, that means the petri dish solution will be classified as hypotonic and water will enter the potato and so decrease the level of water in the petri dish. And I'm going through this one because this one may, you know, need a little bit of explanation for your understanding purpose. And so for option B, say add salt to the distilled water in the petri dish. And if you add salt in the petri dish, that means it becomes a concentrated solution, which we term as hypertonic compared to the one in the potato. So since it is more concentrated, water will leave from the potato, which is dilute now compared to the petri dish solution and into the and leave from the potato into the petri dish. And so therefore, that is correct. Um, for the other two options, 
if you add salt or the same five grams of salt in both, then what you create is an isotonic solution where the concentrations across the, the potato um, tissue is, um, is, um, they are equal. And so if you have equal concentration, there is no net movement of water. So water in equals to water out. And the same thing for D, if there is no salt added and both are distilled, which means equal concentration across the potato tissues, then therefore there will be no net movement of um, water. We classify that condition as being isotonic. All right, so you, look at the, you can go back and look at the word hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic, and please make a note of them, and please try your best to understand them as well. All right, now item 16 refers to the following graph showing the rate of photosynthesis and light intensity. All right, and so it said, which of the following statements best accounts for the shape of the graph? All right, and if you notice as light increases um, on the x-axis, what is happening to the rate of photosynthesis? There's an increase, and then it will plateau at a point. All right, and of course, you can see a level of carbon dioxide there. And so the correct answer for this one is that as light intensity increases, there is an increase in photosynthesis. And how we know this photosynthesis increase because it's on the y-axis. So that is a dependent um, variable. All right. And so, and again, if it does a, does a finish the statement here, is, um, go back to option um, C. It says light intensity increases. There's an increase in photosynthesis until there is no further increase in the rate due to, um, due to some other limiting factor. Because again, if you keep on putting light, and you cannot go any further because something else is not enough to carry out photosynthesis. All right? And so if, for example, carbon dioxide may be limited and so on, water could also be limited as well. All right? And so definitely option C is the correct answer for that one. It's a which of the following feature would not enhance a leaf ability to absorb solar energy? And the answer here is C. Um, and this is because the presence of vascular bundle, and because vascular bundle, as we know it, is just a transporting um, tissue. Xylem and phloem. Xylem transport water and mineral salt. The phloem transport plant food in the form of sucrose. And so in terms of absorption of energy, if you have larger leaf, you could absorb more light energy, right? Um, transparent cuticle. Definitely light could pass through it, so definitely that will enhance the ability to absorb light. And num numerous um, chloroplasts in the policy itself definitely would increase the absorption ability of the leaf because the chloroplast contains um, chlorophyll and chlorophyll absorbs light. All right, so definitely um, option C is not um, able to enhance the absorption ability of light of the leaf. All right, so option number eight or question number eight rather, 18. Is that item 18 refers to the following diagram which represents a metabolic process carried out in plants. And of course, you see chloroplasts and chlorophyll in chloroplasts. You know that is definitely photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide in, in, light in, water in, oxygen out, food out in the form of sugar. So they said the food produced is what? And that is glucose. So glucose is produced by photosynthesis. All right, that's an easy question. Number 19. It said 19 refers to the following longitudinal section of a tooth. And of course, I label for you right there enamel, dentine, pulp, and root and the question asks is that which region of the tooth contains large numbers large number of blood vessels and nerves and so most of the blood vessels and nerves will definitely be in the pulp um oh i label this one incorrectly so this one's supposed to be up uh, option c and not um d and not b sorry so let's just change this one uh made a mistake on this one so I just quickly Quickly, quickly change that into C. So C has to be the correct answer, right? Which is the pulp. So the pulp is where you find most of the blood vessels and also um, nerve cells as well. The, the dentine and enamel, not. All right? So the pulp is the correct answer. All right, so let's go back now to the next question, which is question number uh, 20. Uh, so question number 20. It said, which of the following graphs show the effect of temperature on enzyme control um, reaction? And so, um, let me just go to option A is not the answer. So, D is the correct answer. Because as temperature increases, the enzyme activity will increase. But if it increases at a certain point, it starts to decrease because the enzyme will become denatured. All right, so option D is correct for that one. 
All right, for question number 21, it says a 50-year-old male is advised by his doctor to pay special attention to the amount of salt in his diet. They, I say he probably, he probably has a high chance of developing what? So um, the probability of developing hypertension, and hypertension is, of course, high blood pressure and is due to high salt content. All right. Um, question number 22. So which of the following options correctly matches the gaseous exchange structures with the organism? All right. And so here, gaseous exchange is a human. Um, we have uh, the answer here. It's a human will be alveoli. Uh, I didn't answer that one. Let me quickly do it. So it said human, definitely alveoli. Um, fish will be gill filaments for sure. And plant will be large leaves. So option B is the correct option. All right. So I was trying to do everything so I could go through fast. I hope I don't miss no more. All right. Option number 23. It said item 23 refers to the following diagram of the respiratory system, which, which structures label 1, 2, 3, and 5. All right. So with these structures, we have the trachea, rib, lung, and we have the thoracic cavity here. And um, I'm just going to make a note of this question. It's a, which, of a, which of the labeled structures represents a rib cage? And the rib cage is the entire structure where all the ribs are. So option two is showing you a rib. So I think they actually meant represents a rib and not a rib cage. Because a rib cage would be the entire structure from all the way up here where the first rib is all the way to the bottom. All right, and again, um, I just believe this as, as thoracic cavity because they around the lungs or where the lungs is contained, all the way all around this region is definitely the thoracic cavity as well. All right, um, and closer to the, the lung, you have the the, the 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 pleural membrane. All right, so I could not even label it as pleural membrane, I just say thoracic cavity just to make it easier. Right, so I guess they meant rib in this cage. Uh, if I say rib, rib in this cage. Rib in this case and not cage, all right? I just a rib cage in my mind. Yeah, so they meant rib in this case, all right? And so option two will be the best option if they actually say rib because um, option two is a rib, all right? Everything else doesn't make sense for, for a rib cage at all. All right, um, and of course, I have a diaphragm at the bottom right there. I didn't, I didn't mention that one. All right, question number 24 is that which of the following conditions is an effect of carbon monoxide found in cigarette smoke. And carbon monoxide will reduce um, the transportation of blood in the body. So definitely option C is correct. Question number 25. is an amoeba obtains all oxygen it needs by diffusion via it, its cell membrane, while a human needs to have special, special respiratory surfaces for this process or purpose. Is it a reason... It said the reason which best accounts for this difference is that what? And this again, I think I sure this is a repeat question. So yeah, it is a repeat question, of course. And so there it said a human surface area to volume ratio is too small for diffusion to be effective. All right, and question number 26. It said the activities one, two, three, and four listed below are involved in the clotting of blood. All right, and we have one to four, you can read through them. And it said, which of the following correctly list the sequence of activities? And so the first thing that must take place is that there must be a damage to blood vessels. And once there's a damage to blood vessels, what must take place after that is that platelets are activated. And once plat platelets are activated, what you have next is that fibrinogen will, is converted into fibrin, and they're all proteins, just to mention that. And then the final thing will happen is that the blood cells are trapped, and so you won't bleed to death. All right, uh, question number 27. It said, why is it difficult to develop a vaccine for the common cold? And this one is that the antigen of the common cold virus change frequently. All right, in other words, they mutate at times. All right, 28. It said, the transport of solutes in the phloem. The source is defined as any area of the plant where, and it says source for transportation. I mean, is where sucrose comes. Sucrose is what being transported, by the way, as a sugar, right? Sucrose is transported in the phloem by translocation. And so sucrose 
is loaded into the flow. So that means that's the source. So anyway, it's loaded into the flow. That is the source. I like the source right there in the question to point it out. Question number 29. It says, what is the main storage product of plants? And that is starch. Starch is the storage molecule in plants. For example, starch in cassava, starch in potato, and so on. All right, they're the storage molecule. 30, and we are halfway to the end. It says, which of the following substances is removed during ejection? And ejection is, move, is re the removal of undigested food. So definitely option D is correct. All right? All right, let's go to the next question. Question number 31. It says, which of the following processes is not a form of excretion in plants and this is carbon dioxide diffusing in through the stomata and this is not excretion excretion is the removal of waste and this is taken in so it cannot be um an excretion process all right so diffusing in cannot be excretion at all question number 32 is that which of the following changes in the concentration of substances is most likely to occur in the blood of persons who suffer from kidney disease and this one is an increase in glucose because remember that glucose is reabsorbed by the kidneys. And if there's a kidney um, problem or damage or a disease, then it can affect the reabsorption of glucose. All right, 33. Which of the following correctly describe or describes movement in plants? And it's a growth movement. Um, definitely, yes, that is called, called tropism. Um, part movement. Or we have um, whole body movement, which is not true. So only one and two is correct. Option B is the correct answer there. All right, let's jump to the next question, which is question number 34. It said, in humans, the skeleton system performs a variety of functions, including what? And that is definitely blood cell formation. Blood cells are made in the, blow, in the bone marrow. Uh, 35, locomotion is important to animals for, and locomotion means movement. Um, from place to place, definitely. And so to avoid predators, for reproduction purpose, for assimilation. So assimilation is not included. So option one and two. So therefore, A is correct for that one as well. Movement for those two things. Assimilation is when you take um, digested nutrients in the cell and they become part of the tissues of your body. All right, so question number 36. All right, and for question number 36, we refer to the following diagram with structures label one, two and three all right and here's said the number structures are and coming from the skin which is a sense organ the first um, neuron or nerve cell there must be the sensory so option two has to be the sensory all right and then after that is in the middle right there is a relay so option three is a relay and one is the final one going to the muscles which is the bicep in this case, has to be the motor neuron. Because motor neuron is what's going to help carry out action. Think about the word motor and action. Think about the word sense organ and sensory. So sensory neuron, sensory neurons are connected to the sense organs, and the motor neurons are connected to muscles for carrying out actions. And relay is passing from one neuron to the other, like a relay running a race from one leg to the next. Definitely so. All right, so 36 is option C. Question number 37. Which of the following options best describe the terms stimulus and response? And stimulus is a change within the environment. All right. And response is really the reaction to the stimulus. And so option D is the correct answer. For question number 38, it said refers to the following diagram as a section of the human skin with structures labeled one two three and four all right and again i label them for you right there. you have erector muscle you have the oil or sebaceous gland you have the blood capillary and we have a sweat gland and so which structure is not involved in temperature regulation and temperature regulation is not um, affected by the oil or sebaceous gland that is just to keep the skin moist all right without drying out um, and so the rectal muscles will affect the ear getting standing up straight or laying down on the skin, definitely. And blood capillaries um, through vasodilation or vasoconstriction will control your internal temperature. And a sweat gland will cool the blood. You cool the body, cool the body by producing sweat. Option 39. It's the function of the choroid. 
um, layer in the eye is to do what? And that is reflect light to prevent internal reflection. All right. And so um, here um, I said, well, really is to absorb light to prevent internal reflection. So therefore, option B is the correct answer. All right. The question number 40. And where is 40? Okay. 40 is right here on this side. All right. So question number 40 he said, item 40 refers to the following diagram, which shows nearsightedness in an eye. And just to make a note, the nearsightedness, um, if you notice, the, the, the rays, they actually meet before the retina. And so therefore, we know it's a short-sighted. If it meet, if they meet behind, then they know that's long-sightedness, all right? And so definitely, the answer here is a diverging lens, and it um, bends it outward, so, they could, so the rays of light could actually fall onto the retina. All right, so 41. Now, we're kind of moving a little fast on the first section, or the first 30 questions. In question number 41, it said the statements below describe the processes taking place within a seed during germination. And again, the first option said embryo uses food to develop the radical and plumule, enzyme break down proteins into amino acids, and three is the soluble products move into the embryo. And so the first thing must happen here is that the enzyme must break down the, the food. In this case, they put protein. It could be anything. It could be carbohydrates. It could be lipids. They must be broken down first. And once they are broken down, what must take place next is that the soluble products, which mean the end products of the, of the enzyme reaction, uh, become available. For example, if you have proteins, protein break down to amino acids, which is soluble now, and that could be absorbed by the embryo. All right, and the embryo will use that to develop. So actually, it's two, three, and one. So option D is correct. 42. Item 42 refers to the following unlabeled graph which illustrates a measurement of growth in living organisms. And they said, which of the following labels would be incorrect on the x-axis? And, uh, sorry, not on the x-axis, on the y-axis. And so here, a unit of time will be incorrect for the y-axis because time is an independent variable and it must be placed on the x-axis. All right? Now, question number 43 on this side. Yep. So question number 43, it said the production of new organisms from one parent only is known as what? And that is called asexual reproduction. Uh, mitosis is a process that can be used for asexual reproduction. All right, binary fission is also another process um, that can be used um, to result in asexual reproduction. All right, and again, binary fission is like in bacteria. Uh, mitosis will be in process such as hydra and so on, in organisms such as hydra. And of course, you need to know the difference between binary fission and mitosis. Uh, meiosis is production of gametes, so def definitely meiosis is a process involved for sexual reproduction in producing gametes. All right, so please know the difference between those terms and know how to use them, especially when it comes on to paper two. All right, item number 44 is a reference to the following diagrams of the flowers labeled one and two from two different types of plants. All right, so which of the following statements is true for both flowers? And if you notice the difference is that the anther for flower one is hanging out. So definitely that will be aided by wind. All right, and notice even the stigma in the middle look like a feathery like looking thing, right? And so that is easy to capture the, the pollen that is coming onto it um, by the wind. So certainly, um, Flower one is by wind, and flower two can be by insects or any other animal that attracted to that beautiful color. Well, it's not colored, no, but you can see that it would be a nice petal, right? It's a really good petal flower. And so option D is correct for that one. Um, one is pollinated by wind, while two is pollinated by a bird, and it could be insects, as I mentioned. So it could be any animals that attracted to bright color um, petals. 45, he said, which of the following forms of birth control is most likely 100% effective? Condoms are a good thing. And condom also helps to protect against STIs or STDs. But tubal ligation is when the, 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 the fallopian tube or the oviduct is cut and tied. Normally, even burn in some cases, they burn the ends. But cut and tie is the, is the basic uh, procedure. And once the, the, the oviduct or fallopian tube is cut and tied, there's no way the sperm cell can meet the egg cell for fertilization. So definitely it's 100% effective. Condoms can burst, definitely. Diaphragm can shift and all that. 
uh, birth control pills if not taken properly um, definitely can also um, cause problems. Is they're not one hundred percent effective. All right. Um, item number forty six refers to the following diagrams of specialized cell labeled one and two. So one and two look like an egg cell, and two look like a sperm cell. So which of the following structures is common to both cells? And so cilium is, well, like technically we say none of them, even though um, the sperm cell contains flagellum, but cilia and flagellum are two different things. Cilia is shorter, fl flagellum is longer. So cilia is like here-like, flagellum is like um, tail-like, all right? And so please I make a note right there, see flagellum in sperm cells, all right? Um, nucleus is present in both because they can they carry the genetic material, the number of chromosomes, the chromosomes, and so on, DNA and all of that. Um, cell wall is in plant, bacteria, and fungi. Just to make a note of that, you can please uh, make a note of that. Um, acrosome is the membrane layer in on top of the sperms or the head of the sperm that contain enzymes to help um, the sperm penetrate the egg cells. You can make a note of that. So once you hear about acrosome, is a section of a sperm cell containing enzymes to help to digest or burrow through the egg cell. Number 47, it says, which of the following shows the correct sequence for seed formation after fertilization? And so what's going to happen here? Um, first thing going to happen, the ovule, all right, um, will turn into zygote. So once it's fertilized, it turns into a zygote, all right, and the zygote turns into an embryo. And then the embryo will develop, will develop into the seed. And so I give you a little outline here that the ovules are formed by meiosis, right? Because it is a sex cell. It's a gamete. And the zygote is formed by fertilization. When the, when the, when the sperm from the pollen meets the ovule, and then we have, um, after fertilization, we have embryo developed by mitosis, all right? Because it produces more cells. And then after... The embryo is developed, then we have uh, we have development of the seed by different structures are producing more cells by mitosis as well. All right, 48. They say which of the following diseases matches its its category? And so AIDS is pathogenic. All right. And when I say pathogenic, it means it is caused by an organism. All right. And so um cholera is not psychological, it's a bacteria, so it's pathogenic as well. Um, pellagra is lack of um, niacin, which is the same thing as vitamin B3, and that, is, that would be classified as a deficiency disease. So pellagra is a deficiency disease. All right, arthrosclerosis is not a deficiency disease. It's actually is caused by the hardening when the, when the arteries really become hard or blocked. Um, and this is normally due to your diet. For example, um, intake of large amount of, of fats and oils and so on. If you do not exercise frequently or exercise at all, and so you have the built-up of, of um, fat molecules within the arteries and all that, all right, and cause it to become thick and hard, all right. So definitely, um, C is the correct answer because AIDS is a virus, so makes it pathogenic. It's a pathogen. Forty-nine. It's an animal which transmits a disease-causing organism but is not adversely affected by it, is called a vector. For example, mosquito and the malaria. All right? All right. The host um, will be where a parasite may live in. All right. So vector is definitely the correct one. All right. And pathogen is a disease-causing organism. Number 50. Item 50 refers to the following diagram, which shows the life cycle of a vector with stage labeled 1, with stage... With stages labeled one, two, three, and four. And of course, uh, I just get a bit distracted because you notice this question here, number 50, kind of give away the answer for 49. I was going back up there to for you to see it, right? The vector, right? And so it kind of give away it. It so says the life cycle of a vector. All right, all right, cool. All right. So here now we said what stage, at which stage is this vector easily controlled by the use of aerosol insecticide? And aerosol means that's something you spray in the, in the, in the atmosphere or the air. All right, and so um, the flying insect, uh, mosquito, when it's adult, so actually option four, which is um, D, will be at that point, at that stage. Other stages, um, they will be in the water, so definitely they will not be affected by aerosols. All right, 51. It's a, which of the following descriptions best defines a chromosome 
And a chromosome is a structure made up of DNA wrapped around what's called histone proteins. All right. And so I cannot tell that um, if you look at option A, it's a two forms of the same gene that is described as an allele. Um, nucleic acid that contains all genetic form, um, information. And nucleic acid that contains genetic information is actually described in DNA. DNA is a nucleic acid. RNA is also a nucleic acid as well. All right. It's a part of a DNA which carries genetic information to produce a protein that is called a gene. All right. It's a segment of a DNA for a code. That's a gene. Item 52 refers to the following diagram, which shows four stages of mitosis, labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, here now it says that um, the correct order of the stages is what? And the, and the correct stage is PMAT, which is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Um, but I have a little point to make right here. Um, it is clearly identified as one as anaphase. You can see that the, the, the chromatids separate in the, in the individual chromosomes and go to the opposite side of the cell. Metaphase, they are in the middle in single files. And telophase is where you have cleavage furrow, if it's, if it's animal cell, and pinching, if it's a plant cell. All right? But I want to note the, the third option we are labeled as prophase. In a prophase, really and truly, in a prophase, what you should see is that each, chromo each chromosome should appear with two chromatids and a central mirror. So you know that the X-shaped type of chromosomes, that's what you should see. Instead of seeing those like a single chromatid type of looking thing. So really and truly, um, I put a star or asterisk beside the prophase because that could also indicate the interphase. Right? But again, they said that the stage of mitosis. So I know they meant the prophase. But the prophase, the chromosomes don't look like that. They actually look like an X looking thing. Right? Where they condense and become visible and all of that nice good stuff. All right? But anyway, that's, that's the order. All right, that's the order. Once I identify the other three, P mat, just remember that. P mat. All right, so 53. It says, on this on a certain Caribbean island where sugarcane is grown, a fungus is accidentally introduced um, into the island and destroys the entire crop of sugarcane. So this is very important. Destroy the entire crop of sugarcane. It said, which of the following statements best explains this, um, this occurrence? And so the best answer here is that there's no genetic variation among the plants. So none could survive. They're all the same, so they're affected by the same um, disease in the same exact way. Now, notice that I also put a tick beside option C. They said the plants were planted too close together, so the fungus spread easily. That would be a good option. But again, it's not the best option. Because even if they are close, if some of the plants are resistant, because of their differences, genetical differences, they can withstand or resist um, the attack of the disease, right? And so the, the, the closeness is a good answer in terms of the spread, but not necessarily kill all of them. You see what I'm saying? All right? Only those, um, for those that are resistant, will still survive. So definitely if there's no variation because um, of, and this would be an asexual reproduction of producing the same type of plant over and over, don't know. Um, no, no variation, no differences. Definitely, all will be gone. Option D is correct. All right, 54. Which of the following statements about uh, meiosis is not true? And if you read through, the, read through of them, uh, again, we kind of mentioned this earlier, talk about genetic variation in the, pre, in the previous question. Um, gametes are produced, that's also meiosis. Uh, we produce haploid cells, which mean half number of chromosomes as a, as a, as a parent cell. Um, and the parent cell will be diploid, and so the, the daughter cells will be haploid. And so certainly, option A to C, they're all correct. The number of chromosomes in gametes double. That is not true. That's, that's not true at all. Because again, uh, you produce half number of chromosomes in the, in the gametes or sex cells by meiosis. Number 55, you said in pea plants, purple flowers are dominant over white flower. What percentage of offspring are likely to have white flowers in the following crosses? And so I can do the crosses on both sides. Uppercase P for purple, lowercase P for, for white, because white is recessive. And, I pro and personally, I don't like to use P or S when I'm doing Punnett squares because they look too alike. So I can do my best in terms of it look smaller and one bigger. And of course, the answer would be A. And again, because if you notice, based on this cross over here, all of them will be heterozygous. 
And so if they are heterozygous, which means they have an uppercase P, which means all of them should be what? Purple. So none of them will have the um, will have the white flower. All right, so zero. So no decessor which have white. And none in this case will have white. So zero percent. For this cross now, um, you have 50 percent, which means half of the chart is, is being purple and half being white. So 50 percent will be white, for sure. All right, so option A is correct. 56, it said, one example of a sex-linked disease, and that one is, is color blindness. I guess, this, I think it's a repeat question. Um, yeah, it should. Yeah, I think it is. I see this about twice or so on. All right, uh, 57. It's a variation in population is due to what? And mutation can cause variation because mutation bring about, brings about changes. Um, crossing over, and that is in the prophase in meiosis 1. So please, you need to go through meiosis and mitosis. Make sure you know them. Um, I have lessons on those. Definitely can look at those and you, you know, run, run through them and make sure you understand. Um, asexual reproduction, nada. Because asexual reproduction by, my, um, as I said, mitosis uh, or binary fission, as we said above, no variation. No difference between parent and offspring. All right? And so option A is indeed correct. 58, it says species consist of members that are able to interbreed under natural conditions to produce fertile offspring. So certainly option D is correct. No question about that. No doubt about that one. 59. It says, which of the following descriptions is true about natural and artificial selection? And if you go through the options, you realize that the only thing that really makes sense is option C. Again, natural selection is when the organism will be able to adapt within, within the environment to the changes and so if you're able to adapt, that means you're able to survive. And if you're able to survive, you can pass on your genetic materials um, to your offspring. All right. And then for artificial selection is when it is done by man. And so it produces very different organisms from the natural population because man select definitely what they want and, you know, make what they want. Definitely. Like different breeds of dogs, um, modern dogs, I will call them. They are way, way different than the original um, ones that look more like wolves. All right, item number 60, last one. This is a repeat question as well. It said item 60 refers to the following diagram, which shows stages 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the production of insulin by genetic engineer. And of course, I label this. What's happening here is that the human gene is removed and the insulin-producing gene is cut out of that um, gene. Then what will happen here also is that the bacterium, you remove a plasmid, and they cut that section out of a plasmid, and then they insert the insulin-producing gene at, po at point three, and we call it recombinant DNA that is placed within it uh, because the plasmid is what contains the DNA. All right, and so what will happen here now, when you reintroduce it into it or insert it into the bacterium cell, then the bacterium cell can be able to produce insulin. And so the, the, the question here asks, now, in which of the stages above can insulin be produced by the bacterium and it's when it is reintroduced or inserted into the bacterium cell? And so option um, um, three, I have option three, that can't be right. That cannot be right. I have something that's wrong. I don't know why I did that. I must be sleeping. All right, so option D is the correct answer because that's when the thing is within the bacterium. So this is when they're recombining. All right, so this is when it's in the bacterium cell to produce the insulin. All right, so option D is correct for number 60. And so at the end of it, and thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate you very much. And also, I encourage you to subscribe and share it to friends as well. And I wish you great luck on your examination. And definitely, I will see you soon. So take care of a blessed day.